Well, we, we, we present a, a study about uh, uh, maintenance treatment in uh, advanced non cell cancer and especially in non-squamous carcinoma. Um, the study has been uh, scheduled, has been planned in 2012, so it's, it's uh, a long time ago because <laughs> the treatment algorithm is changing every week now in lung cancer, you know, so it's difficult to plan uh, any study in advance. So the study uh, was uh, uh, attempting to um, optimize the maintenance strategy by giving a maintenance treatment according to the response to induction uh, chemotherapy. We selected a cisplatin gemcitabine induction treatment and the patients who had an objective response to induction treatment uh, were offered gemcitabine continuation maintenance and pemetrexate second line treatment, while the patient with disease stabilization uh, were given pemetrexate switch maintenance treatment. This is the experimental arm, and the control arm was a cisplatin pemetrexate induction regimen followed by pemetrexate continuation maintenance, which is the standard uh, of care uh, actually for these patients. Uh, 932 patients were included in this study. Um, the eligibility criteria were very common, but the patients with uh, evidence of EGFR mutations or ALK positive disease were not allowed to participate into the study. And patients eligible uh, to bevacizumab were also not eligible for the study. Uh, patients with asymptomatic brain metastasis were allowed to participate, so the, the, the patients included in the study were very, uh, very close to the patient we can see in routine clinical practice. Uh, the study failed to demonstrate a survival benefit, which was a primary endpoint with a average ratio of, nine, uh, of 0 0.98. And um, so there was no, no benefit in terms of overall survival. There was also no benefit in terms of PFS. But interestingly, in this non squamous population, there was no uh, obvious uh, evidence for a superiority of cisplatin pemetrexide over cisplatin gemcitabine, uh, which has been shown before in other studies. So we, we did not see any difference between the two induction regimens. For the maintenance part of the study, for the patient who had access to, to maintenance treatment, there, there was a slightly uh, higher uh, PFS for patients uh, uh, randomized in the cis-gem arm. Uh, I mean patients who received gemcitabine continuation maintenance or pemetrexate switch maintenance. So, in conclusion, we, 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 we failed to demonstrate that uh, adaptive the adaptation of maintenance strategy according to response to induction treatment can improve the patient's outcome. But, um, however, uh, we can use this uh, strategy as an alternative strategy to cisplatin pemetrexate followed by pemetrexate because it provided very similar results and the, this regimen is probably more cost effective than cisplatin pemetrexate followed by pemetrexate because pemetrexate is a very expensive drug. And we have many countries in which pemetrexate uh, is not allowed because these countries cannot afford this drug. So the, 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 the strategy we, we propose is an alternative strategy providing very similar overall survival and PFS results. Not, not at this point. We, we, we move to, of course, the immunotherapy landscape and we will start a study uh, that, uh, uh, which goal is to see if we can stop uh, immunotherapy after six months of treatment for patients who respond to the treatment uh, and the, the control arm will be the continuation of treatment up to disease progression. So after six months the patient will be, who responds to treatment will be randomized between the continuation of immunotherapy which will be a, a combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab or uh, if we have really to to, to, to continue the treatment up to disease progression. It is, of course, a very big question at this point because of the, 
the drugs are very expensive and probably it's possible to stop the treatment earlier than we, we, we do uh, actually.